I think this will be a great gun. Excellent. You dudes are sick. You know that? <laughs> you have again made the mistake of clicking on another Nut and Fancy tabletop gun review. And it may cost you. Like I've said in some other videos. And no, I'm not kidding. In fact, I will do you this favor right now. Get your credit card and order this gun right now. Watch the rest of the video whenever you get a chance on your iPhone, on your computer, on your TV, with your link, whatever. Order the gun. Yes, it is that good. Dudes, visitors, newcomers, TMPers, you know the people who actually make this Net and Fancy Project thing work month after month, year after year. Welcome. I pay you back by working for you and finding things like this. Things that represent not just good, not just excellent, but sensational levels of value. By all standards of measure, by any realistic standard of measure, this gun is too good to be true. There's no way, at least in 2014, this gun should cost just $310, but it does. That's why I say order it now. Because this video may up the demand a little bit. Maybe the prices go up. I'm stoked to get the word out on what I'm going to call, here it comes, TM Peers, a go to war option for $310. This is funny. Again, I'm not kidding. I'm not fooling around. I've done plenty of shooting on this thing, and it is excellent. It is on par with, take your pick, Springfield XDM. Glock 17, Walther PPQ, any other number of go-to-war pistols like, I'm sticking with polymer ones, but you could throw some SIGs on the table, SIG P250, all those are excellent, I love them, they're Hall of Famers here in TMP, nothing's going to change that, but I'll tell you what dude, they're a lot more expensive than that gun, let's just ballpark and say twice the price or more. Glock maybe less than twice. Glock is an exceptional value. You are looking at the Turkish produced Canic, that's how I'm going to say the name, TP9. It is a GTW go to war option, baby. It is excellent. It is produced by a defense industry in Turkey. I can't say this name, but I will attempt it. Samsun Yurt Savana? Savanma. It's a Turkish defense contractor. And here's this. We got to jump into this right off. I want to go point by point. I'll prove my case. Trust me. By the way, you should have paused the video and ordered this gun already. Have you? Because it may sell out. I, yeah, I'm not kidding around. But this is a Turkish defense contractor. Actually, Canik, in my understanding, is a subsidiary of the... Uh, let me just call it SYS. It adheres to what is called ISO 9000 quality standards. 
I have talked about this in other reviews. Yep. Basically, and I'm talking really basically, it means the quality on this thing is off the charts. The metallurgy, the polymer technology has to be certified continually to wear ISO 9000 standards. It is a big deal. My way of thinking, since this is a Turkish defense contractor, they're already making GTW stuff. I don't know, helicopters, jet parts, rockets, small arms of all sorts and descriptions. This is just coming along for the ride. So it's made to the same quality standards as all the other stuff that Canik and SYS is putting together. You interested now? Are you being drawn into this pistol yet? Oh, you stage will that trigger. Be. ISO 9000 standards are outstanding. And no, a lot of the pistols we shoot and love are not certified to those levels. Not to say they're not excellent, not to say they don't have cold forged barrels, they do. But to maintain year after year that ISO 9000 standard, and again, I'm not the expert. I know a little bit about it. Go Google it, Wikipedia it, whatever. You'll find all the specifics if you're interested. It's difficult. This gun is produced according to ISO, ISO 9000. To anybody who knows what that means, that just means uh, basically case closed. Order the damn gun for $310. That's what I mean by case closed. I'm going to go and show you point by point exactly what I'm talking about. But ISO 9000 standards. And by the way, as you can gather, this one is produced in Desert Tan. Currently, subject to change, it's also produced in a very cool olive drab. I think pure black. They've had two-tone TP9s out there as well. And this finish seems to be tough. It seems to be Cerakote, is what I'm trying to say. I haven't shot it that extensively to know if it's going to wear off, but if it does, so what? <laughs> It'll just look cooler, right? It's kind of a P99 clone, at least in terms of looks. There are some functional differences, and by the way, the P99 is excellent, as is its successor, successor the PPQ, which I love. This is an M1 version. HOF pistol, GTW pistol. Canik puts together also a CC75 clone called the Dolphin. I haven't shot that, but it looks excellent. Also produced according to ISO 9000. On the philosophy of use. Let's go back to value. For $310, and by the way, it used to be $300, but freaking who cares? 10 bucks? Whatevs. <laughs> Seriously? This can be a stasher if we talk about POU. You don't have to worry about losing your beloved first edition PPQ in a theft. Maybe you stash it in a truck, a vehicle, a log cabin, a burial device of some type. You forget where it's buried. That would suck, by the way. You wouldn't do that with this level of gun? Dude, $300. Stasher, stash it anywhere. Maybe in a garage. So you, you have a gun in arm's reach. It's tough to do when you're throwing down $750 per gun. Right? $300? Maybe a little bit more doable. I think all the other philosophies still play too. I mean, big time. Home defense gun? Absolutely. It's got the rail on it. Pick a tinny standard rail. You put a light laser on it. Kind of my qualification for HD. I like the full size presentation and form factor of the TP9. It is excellent. Better than some other CZ types that we've shot here in the project. Very cool gun. Philosophy of use. Would you really go to war with this, Nothing. Uh, yes, I would. Told you I wasn't fooling around. I actually would. I would carry this all day long if I had to. We'll talk about durability and reliability somewhere along the way on this sojourn of the TP9. But yeah, total, total GTW. And along with that, be a duty pistol. Would any department ever adopt this in the United States? No. No. When I'm talking du duty pistol, obviously I'm talking police forces, maybe security forces, maybe contractors. I think the reason is is because these other outstanding pistols are so established in people's minds and there are a lot of politics that come into play 
to adopt a pistol for any police department, for any sheriff's department, for any federal agency. It is insane. You think this is going to break the market as a foreign pistol? Mm, probably not. But wait, dude. That's foreign. Hey, wait a minute. This is made in Croatia. What? This is made in Germany. Huh, I guess they're all foreign pistols. So be careful with that criticism. If you want to go down that road, well, it's made in Turkey. Uh, some of our favorite pistols are not indigenous to the United States of America. Hmm? But because of that, I think it is dead in the water to be adopted by a police department, which is actually somewhat ironic. Very interesting point here because PDs are so cash strapped. The way Smith & Wesson m &P series got established in many agencies is they were donated. I wouldn't say many, but some. Smith & Wesson just said, hey, you want some pistols? Here you go. They give them to a PD that is cash strapped. Next thing you know, it's a proven service pistol. And other departments look at that department and go, oh, man, they had a really good experience with the m &P series. We're going to buy us 300 pistols. That's kind of the politics I'm talking about. Is it right, wrong? I don't know. It's just the way things work. WRL pistol? Absolutely. Yep, and you could put whatever spin on that you want, but I just think of it as a service pistol through and through. I think the most interesting philosophy of use, because of its extreme value, is stasher. Once again, and that takes us a size, width, weight, balance, and feel. I want to start off actually with a recoil impulse of the Canic TP9. I liked it. Did it have muzzle flip? Yeah. Was it any worse or better than the Glock? Uh, I don't know. I don't have any problems with the Glock. I don't really care. I'm not one of these guys, oh, it, too much muzzle flip. Usually guys start complaining about that when they can't hit the target. I'm serious. That's what I see. Um, higher bore axis on the XD, XDM series. Mm, it seems about the same. The recoil impulse and muzzle flip. I just... I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm just, <laughs> I can't give you a definitive answer on it because it's just not in my list of things that are super important to me. Unless it's insane, I think it's more of a function of the low power 9mm cartridge. <clears throat> there is, I guess, a TP40 out there if you want a 40 Smith & Wesson. At least it, they list it on the Canic website. I didn't go out searching for it. We can't afford to shoot it in the project, so I'm not reviewing that one. Reviewing this one, the 9mm version, which is... This is another reason I'm super stoked on the gun. One of many reasons. Weighs 26.5 ounces. What? That's right. 26.5 ounces. Now, it's a good by way gun, of man. brief, cool gun. Uh, I don't know, review. I am big on weight. You know that. That's one reason I love this gun. 17 yards. With the the Glock, which weighs, drum roll, please, anyone? Ferris, 25 ounces. That's with the magazine. So essentially, these two guns weigh the same. A criticism I still level at the XDM series is, dude, if you're going to make a polymer pistol, make it lighter. This one weighs around 30 ounces. 29, depending on your caliber. 40s are definitely around 30 with the magazine in it. That's the only weight I care about. Empty mag. Ready to go. Ready to load up. I think that's an achievement. Good job. SYS Canic. 26 and a half ounces is way way in the ballpark it is light easy to carry and yet it's a full-size form factor that means you have a longer sight radius to hit with that means it is more comfortable to shoot it has more mass to settle it down to actually connect to the target how about width well we got 1.18 inches with a glock 17 represented here and actually the glock 40 for that matter about the same no i don't I didn't measure it or I didn't remember, but just look at it. About the same. Let's throw up the XDM right here, in case you're wondering, you're worried about it. It actually looks bulkier than it is. This does. It really does. I looked at it, I was like, wow, that's kind of a bulky pistol when I looked at it in hand. Now I'm talking not on paper, because I've been researching this gun for like a year. But width-wise, it's pretty close. You know, it's not as wide as that. What was it? The one I reviewed, the CZ P07 Duty? I don't think it is. The balance is excellent. It feels great in hand. Yes, it does have interchangeable back straps. No, I did not swap them out because, like I've always said, I just keep the one on it that comes with it. You know, if you have really small, really large hands, 
you know what I'm saying. Swap it out. Experiment. Do some dry firing. Uh, I think everything ergonomically I'm talking in terms of weight, portability, SAWC, they got right on this gun, and that takes us to firepower. Uh, how about this? 10 out of 10 on firepower. Have you ordered this gun yet? You need to go order it. <laughs> if you're in the market for a pistol. Okay, and just build in the case. It's, it's going to become like a, you know, one point after another. Selling points. It's 18 rounds. It's a great magazine. And get this. Mechgar. The magazine is produced by Metgar. Which is known for its outstandingness. Excellent quality. Yeah, I'm going to use that word. Outstandingness. Love Metgar magazines. Look at the finish on the magazine. It's that high polished, durable voice of experience over 20 years. Metgar finish. Polymer base plate. Didn't hard test it, dropping on concrete. Don't know if it'd crack. It might. There are some thin parts right here. $310. Uh, I just don't know. Wow, don't have that data yet. But the magazine itself, the fit, the finish, how it inserts like into the mag magazine well, price. it's positivity. A plus, bro. A plus. 18 plus one, three hundred dollars. Dang, does that set standards? Nothing. Well, not really. I mean, the Glock's up there with the plus two base plate. This isn't wearing it here. You're right there. XDM is phenomenal, but the XDM has a very long, you know, hand grip. Let's check it. Let's line up the tops of the slides and we'll check it. This is a Canic going up against XDM. About the same. Okay, so there's no secret there. Extended floor plate on that actually covers part of that magazine, I guess. 18 rounds though, excellent. Now I'm talking 9mm, of course. And as we said, if you can't get it done with 18 rounds, uh, start practicing your marksmanship a little bit better. The magazines, I think, are gonna run, I, I, I forget, but they're not exorbitantly expensive. And you can get them. That's a plus. That's your number one accessory if you go buy a TP9. Get more magazines, and that takes us to accuracy. By the way, somewhere along the way, you may see me doing shooting in my motorcycle helmet. That's right. Went out to parts unknown in desert wilderness areas to test this gun, and it was fun. We got to find a way to save gas in TMP. I'm just saying, we've got so much going on. It's for now, I'm doing motorcycle testing. <laughs> You may not get a plate rack off of that, but you'll get some steel. And I'll tell you this, it was a great gun to shoot on steel. Great gun. Hits came, I won't say easy, because there is something you need to know about the TP9, which I will cover. You gotta work with that issue. Once you have that issue down, you can connect readily with it, fast with it. Yes, even in a motorcycle helmet. <laughs> The main reason I did that is because I had the GoPro camera mounted on the side. It wasn't for any type of novelty or trying to be silly or anything. It was just GoPro footage is the main reason. Yeah, loved it on steel. It The accuracy is, again, as good as any of the other pistols or whatever other combat pistol you want to throw on the table from what I've seen. Kind of like this. This was today, by the way. This is a friend of mine, Mike, helped us shoot it. You've seen him in the project for years. He did, actually, I'm going to be dead honest with you. When he first shot this guy, he sucked ass. Yeah, he sucked. And I had to take him aside. I was like, dude, uh, okay, we need to, I'm kind of kidding around here, but he was bad. I was like, let's remember trigger pull. I talked about breathing. I talked about consistency and sight picture. I spent some time with him dry firing with the TP9, which is its own animal, just like all guns are their own animal. They have their own shooting characteristics once he did that this is what he came up with Six, seven yards we're shooting federal target range ammo that's a great group he was consistently low left which tells me he's getting his marksmanship down perfect because he's consistent so the sides could easily be adjusted for him i'll talk about that in the accessories good job dude all right i need to go faster on this i show you way too much paper i shoot way too much ammo with these guns but i want to give you some data points to prove the case this is my gun seven and a half yard shooting against the orange silhouette probably my overall favorite target to test on great visibility with the sights it's just easy especially if you throw it down at 20 yards or beyond somewhere along the way i'm going to show you when i shot it out in the desert i just taped some targets on the log Excellent. and 
and just shot it from the seat of the KTM 690, which was great. Great stability shooting from the seat and just standing. And I got some good groups out of there and it's tough doing it in the desert. You'll see I shot it better in the indoor range. This is, uh, I think this is me shooting it. Canic TP9 and I have a variety of hollow point representations here. This is Federal HST 124 grain. I think I have one right here. Is that it? Oh yeah, that one. Let's see how we're at here. Great round. Love it. Another HST group. That's three rounds, by the way. The Canic. Hope I'm saying that right. Actually, I don't care if I'm saying it right. That's just what I'm gonna say. Canic. Canic. That's Fiocchi, 124 grain. Fiocchi shoots very consistently. See, consistently love it. Gold dot. Dang, I love gold dot. I need like a bazillion rounds of gold dot just to make me smile. That's a gold dot, 124. I think we're on it. If you shoot plus P loads in it, which we did in the Canic, it cycled them perfectly. Just remember it's increased slide velocity if you feed a steady diet. You're putting a little bit more wear and tear on the gun. Look at that group. That's this one right here. 115 grain. Remington jacketed hollow point. Been around forever. Still shoots great. Indoor range, I think this is me. Yeah, it is. This is a uh, Federal FMJ, actually. This is when Mike was having trouble, and I was like, well, maybe the sights are off. So I shot a little bit. Got some great groups. There you go. Oh, suckers. Suckers. Wow, that's a good group, dude. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm stoked on it. Yeah, so basically it's a one hole gun at seven yards. Backed it up to 20 yards. Actually, it's beyond that. I think like 30 yards in the desert I shot it. I had more trouble with it there. Uh, and here's why. Because the sights are very open. Very reminiscent, sights. actually, of the Walther PPQ. You might, you might like it. I generally don't. And I did level the same criticism against the Walther PPQ and here it is on the table you can see it's almost identical the amount of air you have on your sight pictures between the Canic TP9 on the right PPQ thank you very much on the left three dot variety here non uh, phosphorescent and non tritium I think at one time they did have glow in the dark sights I don't think this one is and then this one has tritium dials just because it was the first edition eat your heart out similar sight pictures but for me and I've said this in other reviews once the distances go longer, I have a hard time keeping the groups tight. I just start wandering because I don't have a, I don't know, a real consistent, precise sight picture at those distances. Will it matter practically if you're going to put this into a defensive or offensive philosophy of use? No, it probably won't. Here's what I hope. I hope the gun becomes so successful that companies like Heine start making aftermarket sights for it. That's what I hope. That you'll see TP9 sight sets come out. Maybe... Um, you know, TFOs come out for it too. That would be cool. That would stoke me huge. A little bit air in there. By the way, while we're talking about the sights, that rear is adjustable. Yeah, on a $300 gun, adjustable. Well, the sights are made of polymer. Well, the sights are freaking made of polymer on the Glocks too, dude. These aren't them. These are aftermarket uh, Meprolites. Way high ones for the suppressor. But they're excellent sight sets. And we were talking about where Mike's groups were. Maybe they're high, maybe they're low. They do include in the box, get this. I hope they didn't fall off the table. Different sight heights for this front blade. Check that. $300 pistol. $310, whatever. And they have tools that come with it too to interchange the back straps or take the front sight off and interchange it. So you can zero this pistol exactly with a load you have exactly for your effed up eyeballs yeah i i'm i'm cross-eyed dominant i shoot right-handed and i'm left eye dominant you can tell by the way i shoot that's why i shoot every pistol left and i have to bring that rear sight as you're seeing me doing right here with a leatherman oht by the way drifting it to the right and then it shoots on for me i would say accuracy is outstanding if you can, and this will lead us into ergonomics, deal with the trigger. What? You said it's awesome. It is awesome. And it's actually a double action, transition, single action, striker fire pistol. The Canic is. In other words, you start off with a double action. 
Notice that it stages to single action and there it will stay. Well, that's kind of funky. That's not like the P99. Uh, right, it ain't. But that's where it is. And then from here you pull single action. Okay, and notice no magazine disconnect safety. So that's cool. So I have the magazine out of the gun. You can still fire the gun. That's a plus. I would say the trigger is a little bit funky. In fact, I would say it's very stiff. I read somewhere guys are saying, oh, that's a five pound trigger. Uh, no, it's not. Maybe in earlier versions they were. I, I really don't know. All I can go off is this one. Let's bring out the trigger scale and we'll see what it pulls at. I already know. It's uh, heavy. So I've already staged it to single action. So we're not going to do a, you know, a double action pull. Let's see. Oops, forgot to press the button. Not the first time or the last time I'll ever do that. Stage that trigger right here. Zeroed. It's going to be about 10 pounds, dudes. Spoiler alert. Right there, dudes. Yeah, it's heavy. Uh, the thing is, it pulls, it feels lighter than it is when you're dry firing it. When you're just dick, dicking around on the table, you go, oh, that's ah, that's not too bad. I think, I think the... The throw off there is because you you have so much leverage by the time you come to the back of the trigger guard look at where your finger is you have a lot of leverage at that point so it doesn't feel as heavy as it is because your fingers in full pull a lot of leverage you, you trip it no no big deal by the way here's your reset for you guys that want to know right there very short reset i like it i, like I don't it because I shoot so many different guns. Am I going to shoot it like a quarter inch reset? Oh crap, I forgot. I'm shooting a clock now. No, I come further forward in the trigger guard and it doesn't seem to handicap me. I think the guys that really care about reset are the competitors. The ones that are microseconds count. I think those guys who shoot a lot, shoot often in competition, reset's critical to those guys. For the rest of us, probably not. Just saying. Philosophy along the way. You know what? Uh, the trigger, can it be gunsmith? <sighs> Uh, well, definitely you're not going to go out and buy a trigger kit for your TP9. That's not going to happen. No. Uh, I hear it's a complicated system in there. So, you know, the striker, how it's put together, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, difficult to work on. I didn't check it, didn't smith it. If I were you, I would just learn to live with it. A tip from your uncle, but fancy. Because it's a $310 gun. Do you want to go out and spend $100 on a trigger for this? Now you need to look at your economy. And I've said this in other reviews. You know, are you just better off going and getting a Glock? And if you're so bent out of shape over the trigger, don't get one. That being said, I showed you the accuracy. I'm shooting one hole of this thing. So apparently it's not that big of a disadvantage, is it? No, it's not. I also like on a Canic trigger, there is a second strike capability. So you have a dud cartridge, which I don't see very often. You can go double action and pull it again without cocking. That's a plus. You may see me do that in the video somewhere, but it was because, and here it comes, there, were, there was one failure to eject a spent cartridge casing and one failure to feed during the round of testing on the TP9. Am I really worried about it? No. You know, it's a break-in thing. I don't know. Usually full-size service pistols shouldn't need break-in. I've said that. But it happened. Just telling you. Other ergonomics. I was going to say, I don't. I like how there's nothing on the trigger face. Kind of like the Glock has a safe action paddle on it. M&P has an articulated trigger, which, by the way, makes it more difficult to shoot accurately, in my estimation. It's just a clean trigger face. Very wide. Nothing going on there that would bother me. Big trigger guard. Lots of room. There's no rubbing issues here. It's undercut here in the polymer. Kind of some very subtle finger grooves here. Not much traction on the side. It's very smooth here. The interchangeable back strap has some molded in stuff in there. I don't know. Does that make a big deal? Uh, no. I don't think it's a slick pistol. I would say traction on the TP9 is medium. I would say the grip as it feels in hand is outstanding. Almost, not quite, but almost as good as the PPQ. The PPQ still, for me, is just, oh man, that and the SIG P226E2 series. Yeah, they, they excite me. This is not too far behind. It feels pretty similar to this. Na, 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 na. XD, XDM. That's what it feels like. And I'm glad it doesn't have a paddle like the XD, XDM. I'm talking uh, grip safety, actually. Ergonomics. Magazine button is 
superb. Could not be improved. You won't have to do anything aftermarket. Not that you could anyhow. You can't swap it, lefties. So it is reversible. That is a plus. Here's your magwell. I don't know if I showed you that specifically. There is some molded in funneling on the front side of it. Excellent. Talked about the pick rail already. There is milling on tapering on the slide is what I'm trying to say. By the way, I love that desert tan. That is so sick looking, especially with a burnt powder on there. Excellent. Uh, I love that grip or the milling here in the rear of the slide. Excellent. You can cock it easy. And you've probably been looking at this the whole time. That is a decocker for the striker. Why would you need that? Well, maybe for disassembly. I'll try to show you that. I don't know if I will. It's probably more for this because you can stage the trigger. I would not recommend walking around like that, by the way. Here's why. Um, this does have a firing pin safety. Okay, so it's not going to go off, but you can decock the gun if you drop it. Let's try it. I shouldn't say decock it, but actually trip the sear. I wasn't able to do it. <laughs> I did it, I don't know, tonight. And basically what it means is it'll trip the sear. It won't fire the gun because the firing pin safety will not allow it, but the trigger will look like that. Okay, so I think this is mostly due to if for whatever reason you stage a trigger like that, you don't like it, you can decock it. So that's a decocker for the striker for disassembly and for that. So it's me. By the way, this right here is a status indicator for your striker. Doesn't mean there's a, a round in the chamber. It just means there's a status in, or just a striker status. So the striker is cocked right now. Let me change position here so I get leverage. Like that. So now the striker is uncocked. If you're getting the impression this pistol is well thought out, welcome to the club. The features I'm showing you are again equivalent to a $700, maybe $600 polymer combat pistol. H and K, all the other ones we've been talking about. Ergonomically, very squared away. Size, weight, balance, feel. I think I made the case. How about feel strip? Easy, breezy. Magazine comes out, rack the slide a couple times. By the way, I didn't talk about the slide lever. It's very Glock light, very low profile. I think most of you guys are slingshotting it like that, so you don't care. I use this all the time, though, dude. Worked in the 80s, still works now. This is your takedown lever right here. And by the way, if you want, you can press your striker decocker when it's appropriate to do so. So I come back here. I just pull the trigger, dude. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's quicker. There's the inside of the TP9. Uncleaned. I did clean it when we first got it. I take out all, uh, how should I say, unknown origin lubricants from my pistols. Not a Glock, because that's, to me, a standard of measure. I know they use really good lubricants. I'm not so sure in Turkey what lubricants are using. I just stripped it, put my own in. Slip 2000 in this case. Look at the steel rails on there. Excellent. Everything is corrosion proofed. And by the way, speaking of ISO 9000, that barrel is uh, cold forged. It's produced by MKEK. That's M-K-E-K, -E the barrel. Notice the, the recoil spring, which by the way, it rides on a metal rod, flat wound recoil spring. There's your barrel. And what I was gonna say, I think a lot of the parts are matte chrome finished inside for more corrosion resistance. Obviously this will be corrosion resistant because it's inside and outside coated. This slide of the TP9. Here's a close look at the internals in case you're wondering. Hey, maybe I could work on that trigger. Somewhere, 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 some way, someone's gonna find a way to work on, work on and improve the trigger of the TP9, no doubt. Oh, geez. What did I do? Oh, I know what I did. I didn't seat this all the way, so I need to seat that. Now let's try it again. Function check, bang. Fuel strip and maintenance. I've talked about the lubrication I put on already. Accessories, versatility. Like I said, I hope the gun catches on. It sells a bazillion copies because then you're going to see a bunch of accessories made for it. Do I think this will happen? I honestly don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you on that. Uh, it just depends on how this gun takes off. Right now, it is unknown. It sells very few units from what I know. No one's talked about it. There's a couple people talking about it, but it's definitely definitely not popular yet. 
I hope this video changes it. Yep. I hope it just takes off. You won't need a ton of accessories though because check this. Remember the price, by the way. By the way, have you ordered it yet? You have what I consider to be a full plethora suite of accessories. Extra magazine, remember it's a Mechgar, back strap, mag uh, magazine loading tool, and two different ways to attach what I consider to be an outstanding Serpa knockoff holster. Witness. Lightweight, great materials. I think this holster is also produced according to ISO 9000 standards. From what I'm seeing, I'm talking that screws are super high quality brass. They're blackened. There's nothing cheap about any of this. Outstanding. There's your cleaning rod, brush. Comes with a cool manual, which is actually in English. Imagine that. And on the back, there's their bragging of their ISO 9000 certifications. I'll roll in a photo of one of their certificates. Pretty good manual. Is it outstanding? Uh, no, it's pretty straightforward and simple, but it's good enough. That's probably the first time I actually cracked it. Accessories. OEM accessories are so good, I don't think you need a lot. I wouldn't mess with a trigger. I already said that. Value. I'm wrapping it up. Uh, we've hit that all along. That's why I said grab your credit card and order it if you need a pistol. Now, what I think will happen is that it will start picking up. The word's going to get out on the TP9. Uh, and with that, I think the price is going to go up. That's why I'm saying what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying right now, order it while it still is $310. Because if the demand goes up, what do you think is going to happen to the price? That's one reason. The other reason is it is an imported gun. And we know what can happen at any given time with political wins for the imports. Suddenly, by an executive order, the president can go, uh, no, we're not importing that gun anymore. And you can't get it. That's what I'm saying. The value of this gun reminds me of the Dewu DP-51, circa 1995. I was stoked on that because it was a $250 combat proven forged aluminum 9mm pistol. Combat proven at least with the Korean forces, right? I was stoked on that. It has come back as a Lineheart, but it does not represent the same level of value. It's much more expensive. Granted, there's some additions made. This is the DP-51 of the 2014, in a manner of speaking. This represents the incredible level of value. You can still go out and spend a Glock, money on a Glock, they're outstanding too. Every gun I've brought on the table, at least in this review, really Hall of Famers, they're all GTW options, but they're more expensive. Some have a lot more accessories, more options for the trigger, like the Glock, like the XDXDMs. You may have a hard time finding your TP9 in your gun store. I recommend ordering it, ordering it direct from the link in the upper right or at the top of the screen. Just ship it to your FFL, done. And then if you don't like the trigger, if you can't shoot the gun, which I think will be unlikely if you practice enough with it, sell it. Turn around and get your money back. Get the OD version. Such a freaking cool gun. Values off the charts. Durability and reliability. I told you about the issues we had, one FTF, one FTE, I'm um, not too worried about it. They didn't come back. Talked about the coal forged barreled ISO 9000, it is a GTW pistol. I think it will be able to withstand as many rounds as you can send down the barrel. What about spare parts, Netton? Uh, I don't think you'll ever shoot enough to worry about it. Kind of like you never shoot your Glock enough to worry about it. The only guys I think that are shooting their Glocks enough to worry about it are our competitors or duty officers with an agency. And they do lots of qualifications, lots of rounds, lots of rounds. Maybe a little part here will break, but this gun's so reliable. This one's the same way, from what I know. It is a Hall of Fame GTW pistol for $310 2014 Good prices. Gun. The track record, from what I know, and then I have researched it. Some guys said they've put thousands of rounds through there. It's no problems at all. I think is going to be off the charts. Highly, highly recommended. This is the Turkish produced Canic TP9. Get your favorite flavor of color, but get it. Thank me later. Nothing fancy.
That's a sweet gun, man. Thight. Sights are too coarse, though. Trigger pulls way to the rear. It's a cool gun, though.